These are the things that I'm doing in 2024 to be able to grow my online coaching business and what you need to do if your focus is also going to be on growth and really being able to expand and create more opportunities and more impact and bring in more clients. I'm really excited to get into this because there's a few things that I want to talk about in terms of what's required from you if you really are looking to grow your business, right? You know, you've probably been working on your business for a while. You've been doing a lot of things. But if you really want to make 2024 the year, like your year, (laughs) where things really take off and take off to a new level, well, there's a few different things that I feel are really, really important for you to take into account to see those changes. And I want to tell you a little bit about what I'm doing and how I'm going to make this impact into my own business, right? So the first thing that I want to get into is making sure that there's a really solid foundation in place to be able to receive these clients. So what I want you to understand is that your ability to grow your business comes down to your capacity to receive them. And what this means is that if you're really looking to grow, you want to make sure that you have in place the systems, the processes, all the things that are necessary for you to be able to receive those clients. I know that most people are just focused on marketing and just focused on lead generation or client acquisition and making that as the most important important part of your business. But what I really discovered in 2023 is that nothing matters more than your ability to be able to receive those clients in the first place. And that means a lot of different things. It means really taking a look at where you might be sabotaging or where there might be things where you're not showing up in the right way, or you've created a business model that isn't really aligned. And you've done so because you think that this is the only way that things work, because that's what you've been told by all of your coaches in the past, but it can also mean looking at your systems. And this is what my focus has really been, I would say probably the last six months of my business. And even right now in 2024, I've already started the year by truly focusing on making sure that my internal processes and systems are set up. For example, yesterday I spent all day uh, optimizing and updating my contracts. And, you know, what that means, you know, I've had my contract in place, I have a lawyer that looked over them and created all of these things. But there were a few things that I wanted to add in there that I felt would be really, really important. So having those things in place, making sure that people have to sign their name when they sign up to work with me and fill out that contract and all of those details is really important for me. Because if my intention is to grow my business in 2024, I need to make sure that all all my ducks are in a row. Hopefully that makes sense, right? Another thing is just looking at the back end systems for when people become clients. What emails do they get? What videos are they watching? What workbooks do they have? Like really taking a close look at your actual offer and your programs or pro offer offers, however many you have, and making sure that everything is just really set up in such a way that that it's great. It's a a, a powerful customer journey and a powerful experience for your clients, right? I feel like I know that this might sound like something silly or maybe this isn't what you would think are going to be the things that are going to make a big impact in your growth, but I promise you that they will. Because if you don't have those things in place, you are internally in one way or another going to have the fear of what if I get too many clients? What if this happens? What like am I going to be able to handle all of this? And in one way or another, you're going to start sabotaging your growth and success without even realizing it. So for me, having systems like that in place have really allowed me to say, okay, well, I don't care if I get one client or 20 clients in a month. It's, you know, everybody's going to get a powerful experience anyways, and they're going to get the best of me. Um, You know, I I really think that this is important. One thing that I want to add to that is that one of the things that I've been working on, for example, this week is creating a WhatsApp community for my clients, for example. And this is something that is brand new. And again, it's me thinking about, okay, if I'm looking to grow my business this year and I know that I'm going to be growing, how can I serve my clients even better? And I wanted to be able to create something that allowed me to have more frontal communication with my clients where they can access 
you know, access me quicker, ask me questions, get immediate feedback. And so those are all things that I'm building, thinking about, okay, if I'm growing this year, how can I serve my clients better? So that's the first thing, really having that very powerful, solid foundation in place to be able to receive the people that you want. The second thing that I really recommend is taking a close look at or auditing, maybe let's look at it like that, at your whole business, at your entire customer journey, making sure that there's a lot of coherence in what you're doing. So here's what I mean. When we talk about customer journey, it's everything that it happens in your online business, where it's like your content that you're putting on social media, it's your funnels, it's your sales pages, it's your website, it's your social media bio, it's your um funnels, your emails, your book a call page, what happens when people book a call, what happens after they have the call with you, what happens when you onboard them. So all of the pieces of your business, you need to take a close look at them, making sure that there's a lot of coherence and consistency with what you're saying. People think when we talk about messaging, that messaging is like their website copy and that's it, but it's not. It's everything, everywhere. It's like all of the different places in which your message and your brand show up. And if you are on your website, you're like, yes, great messaging, all the things, but everywhere else, there's something off of your customer journey, whether it's how you do sales, for example, or how you send emails or how you're inviting people to book the call with you or what happens after they book a call with you, or if your marketing sounds like everybody else and you are just like creating quality, quantity, 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 and not paying attention on quality, well, that's going to break your business in one way or another. Everything needs to be in alignment. So in my case, one of the things that I really pride myself on is how my business is exactly what you see. So who you hear or watch here, depending on where you're at right now, whether you're listening to me or watching me on YouTube, um, who you see here is exactly who I am everywhere in my business. There's no difference. And if you were to run run into me in person tomorrow, this is exactly what you would find as well. Like you get, you see what you get or you get what you see. You know what I mean, right? So my point is that it's really important that you have all of these things that are very consistent and in alignment with who you are. And I really feel that this is fundamental because I see this all the time. I see people that are like, Fabi, I don't understand. I'm doing all the things right. Like my messaging isn't bad. It's good. I'm talking to the right audience. And then I start kind of going deeper into their customer journey. I listen to their webinars and it's like red flag, red flag, red flag, you're you're talking down to people, you're forcing people, you're doing like the old sales strategy where you're trying to really just get people to buy and pressure them in and all of these things. And that does not work anymore in 2024. There has to be consistency. If you're talking about empowering your clients and allowing them to make better decisions, that needs to be true throughout your entire customer journey. And that is something that is really, really important. So in my case, I have done a lot of upgrades, a lot of updates in my business in the last year, and all of those things show up everywhere. But my opportunity right now is to go back, for example, to my website and make sure that my messaging is really aligned with all the new things that have happened in the last few months, making sure that there's not anything old there that I don't want to have around or that doesn't really resonate or reflect who I am as a brand and as a business today. So that's the second thing. The third thing is making sure that you're elevating the conversation and treating your audience like people and not leads. I really think that this is very important in 2024. And I've talked about this extensively, how important it is for us to stop doing marketing the old way, stop with the pain marketing, stop with like the transactionality. The world is changing. The world has changed. I think that 2023 was a massive year for change in the marketing space with everything that happened with chat GPT and all of these like AI and all like how it took over the market. But don't think that because these things came in, it means that people um, are looking now 
to just like, let me, let me just scale my business using AI and not being a human being. I think that more than ever right now, people are looking to feel heard and they're looking to feel seen and they want to make sure that you're treating them correctly and that you care about them and you're not just a number for them. And I feel like this is crucial. It's about how you view your audience. These are not leads. These are people. These are moms and dads and children and parents and grandparents and people with dreams and people with a vision and people that want things to happen and people with goals. And it's important for you to start treating your audience that way. If you don't know how to do that, go to readytoinvestclients.com because I have a 20 minute training that walks you through how to elevate the conversation, how to speak to people in a more powerful way so that you attract better quality leads. It's going to make a massive difference this year. For me, what I'm doing is just making sure that my system I'm kind of coming back to what I said in point number two about the customer journey, right? But that my systems are really focused on just humanizing the whole experience even more. Even if I'm using, you know, automation, how can I make the process feel powerful to people? How can I make the process feel to people like this is something, you know, where we care about them, where it, we are really listening, and it's not just a little process to get people to buy. So I'm going deeper, really thinking about that nurture process even more to make sure that I'm doing a better job at um, at just making people feel heard and like people and not just a lead or a transaction that's going to happen in my business. So that is the third thing. The other thing that I would focus on, the fourth thing, is really making sure that you double down on what works and not on the shiny object. So the thing is that I would imagine that in a year, right after AI became like the big boom, and we'll talk about AI a little bit more in a moment, I would imagine that there's going to be a lot of shiny objects that are going to pop up this year, like a lot of marketing strategies that are the thing and a lot of platforms that are the place and a lot of whatever, you know how it is, right? Every year it feels like there's something like I, I, I vividly think about Clubhouse and how that was like the thing for a minute. And now I don't even know if it still exists. I mean, maybe I'm sure that there's people right now making millions of dollars off of Clubhouse, but still. Um, so it's really important for you to not so much focus on the shiny thing, but focus on what works. And when I mean what works, I mean what works for you. It's not, you know, and I say this all the time. I feel like I say this almost every week on my group coaching calls with my clients. You know, there's people right now that are making millions of dollars using webinars, millions of dollars on TikTok, millions of dollars on Twitter, millions of dollars on threads, millions of dollars on Facebook. And there are people that are failing at the exact same thing in every single one of those platforms or strategies. It's not the marketing. It's not the strategy. It's the strategy that works for you personally. So you really want to think about, well, how do you want to live your life? What feels good to you? Do you want to be posting every day on social media? Is that your thing? If it is, go for it. Awesome. But if it's not, look for alternatives, whether it's running ads or going on podcasts as a guest, whatever you need to do to make sure that you are feeling good with your business. But double down on the things that work and, and, and look for ways to optimize those things, right? So for me, I have been doing webinars since the beginning of my business. Since 2016, I launched my business. Almost a, like three months after launching my business, I launched my first webinar, basically. And for me, that is one of the things that has worked really, really well. So for me, doubling down has, has become over the years optimizing that entire process. It hasn't been, ooh, let me try. Well, I have tried a lot of things, I have to say. But it has, but but even if I've tried other things, my focus has also always been my webinar. And that process led me to create my 20-minute proprietary webinar process, right? Proprietary, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that, that felt like a hard uh, phrase to say. Um, but that's what I have focused on, right? Really making sure that I have turned this idea of using a webinar as a system for your business into something that is digestible and powerful and is really great at converting. Like literally right now, we have an over 40% conversion rate on the webinar that we have. So it's about, for me, 
doubling down on that. That means that I'm not going to be necessarily creating a million strategies this year. I'm just going to be focusing on the things that work for me. And that is it, right? You want to make sure that you double down on what works for you and not on the shiny object that appears in the market that is promising you to have all the solutions to all your problems and your life is going to be perfect now. Because that's not how it works. <laughs> that's literally not how it works. So then the last thing that I want to talk about in terms of things to grow your business in 2024 is leveraging AI and leveraging chat GPT, but also at the same time, less robots and more heart. So what I mean with this, I think that there's a lot of opportunities to use AI and robots and all the things in your business in a powerful way. One of the ways, for example, is Mammy chat and automation through DMs and things like that in your business. I think that this is something that is really powerful and that has gotten better and better and better over the years. And I see it being used more and more often. However, just because you have something like ChatGPT or whatever you're using, um, Dolly, I don't even know the names of all of them, but all of the different things that there are out there, that doesn't mean that that's going to actually replace you. You know, I, you know, very well, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, that I do these 15 minutes brand message assessments every single day. And I look at websites all the time. And one of the things that has really been surprising, I would say over the last maybe three months, is how obvious it is when a website is written with chat GPT and how, for me, that is an immediate turnoff. And I think that, you know, obviously I'm not looking at these websites necessarily with the intention to buy from them because what I'm doing is giving people um, strategies and optimizations and things that they can implement into their business to get better results. By the way, you can book that at brandmessagesession.com. But I, I even I, I kind of put myself in the shoes of somebody who would be a potential client and it's an immediate turnoff. I look at them, I'm like, this is so obviously written by chat GBT. It's like so perfect. And so um, like the structure, I don't know. I, I, I feel like you can immediately tell and it kind of gives me the wrong vibe. It kind of gives me the vibe of you're not an expert enough to share this. So you had to use chat GPT to be able to write it for you sort of thing. And it's interesting because I use chat GPT in a lot of things that I do in my business, but it's not the core ever. I use it to help me develop ideas and kind of go deeper into the ideas, but not necessarily for copywriting. I take that on myself. And so I really feel that that's not going to work the way that you would think. And I think that actually it's going to make it even worse for businesses when they're relying too much on chat GPT or AI to be able to create content or write their copy or all the things because it feels robotic. It doesn't feel human. The humanity isn't there when you're doing that. So yes, leverage these tools because they're amazing tools and they're going to help you do your job faster, but don't rely on them so much that you kind of get lost in your brand and nobody really knows who you are or what you stand for. So these are some of the things, and I'll kind of recap what they were, um, but these are the things that I'm focusing on to grow my business in 2024. Number one, having a really solid foundation, making sure that I have the capacity to receive clients by optimizing processes, um, creating communities, and doing all the things that are needed for you to make sure that your clients are getting the best of you. Number two is having a coherent and consistent customer journey where your messaging is the same throughout everything that your brand touches, basically. The third thing is elevating the conversation and treating your audience like people, not like leads, just really humanizing that experience for them. The fourth thing is doubling down on what works and not on shiny object just because. And then finally, less robots, more heart, but also leveraging AI. I hope that this was helpful. Make sure that you watch on YouTube, you subscribe on YouTube, you follow me on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify, and I will see you next week. Bye.